Hey, what's happening, guys? Today we're going to talk a little bit about desoldering components from a board, whether it's, you know, a homemade board like this or a uh, professionally manufactured PCB. The techniques are all going to be the same. And the one thing that I can't stress enough is the time factor in doing these. These thin little layers of copper that are down there on the board, what your components are connected to, are, you know, less than a piece of paper thick. So if you heat them up too much, if you heat them up too many times, they're going to lift up off the board and you're going to be in a worse case than you were before. So when you're trying to desolder something, one of the most important things is to get it done as quickly as possible. And sometimes that might take a little bit of counterintuitive thinking where you actually want to turn the heat of the iron up a bit. That way you can get the heat in quicker. It's, it's dwell time is what we're trying to avoid. So I have all my different tools with me here. We have some desoldering braid, some flux, a desoldering pump, and the hollow needles. All are different, all have their own purposes. Let's start by talking about desoldering braid. It's just braided copper. And it uses the capillary effect to suck up solder. So right here, I have a couple pads. We're going to zoom in and see if we can't get a better shot. Okay, there we are. So... We have some solder on those pads and we want to get the solder off the pads because we want to be clean when we're reinstalling our component, right? Let me get the focus there a little better. So the desoldering braid is great for that, but here's going to be the rule for everything when we're desoldering. Flux. Flux makes the solder flow better and the better it flows, the easier it's going to be for you to get it out. You can actually see the solder being sucked up in. Again, flux. Flux is the key to getting in and out quickly, not burning things up or lifting them up. Okay, so we got one okay and one not so okay. Now this is a case where I like to use the desoldering needles. So what you want to do is you want to find the largest needle size that will fit through a hole. I believe it's this one, the 1.2. Yep, that'll fit through there. Now, what I can do get my soldering iron back through there, heat that up, push that through. Solder will not stick to it. And when I pull it back out, now we have a nice clean hole. I'll do that again here. like that and one final one to take care of right here yeah sorry I'm a little horsey sounding today I got a bit of a sore throat going on there there we go see you can even see some of the solder just falls right off so those pads are now good and can be reused so now let's talk about components the hardest thing that you're going to find are going to be ICs like this one. You know, what, you know, there, there are a bunch of different things you can do. You can come in here and try, you know, rubbing it, get them all heated at once. You can try using the soldering braid to soak up most of it at one time. But if you're replacing this, you're replacing it probably because it's bad. 
So my advice is just get in there and bite off the legs. And once we've done that, we can come back in with some of our other tools, you know, get those out of there, clean it up. It's, you know, it's the same thing. Now we can just heat these up. Find the right hole. Come out. So, oh, I'm right. I might be in the wrong spot. All right, that one's becoming a little bit tricky. So we'll heat it from this side. Again, you want to do this as quickly as possible. Heat it from this side. Then we can just pull that pin out through the other side in. Well, uh, we're good to go. All right, so let's talk about using the desoldering pump. We'll do it on this capacitor here. So the desoldering pump's really simple. So, you know, you just have a hollow tube here, spring-loaded, press the button, and it works pretty good. Get it on there. Get that nice and heated and flowing. Ha! I missed the, missed the fire button. What the heck's going on? Oh, I did not load it. And there's the phone. Sorry about that, folks, but uh, we're back up. Anyway. So you got an idea of how the pump works. Well, here is a neat little hack that'll make your pump work even better. Get you some soft silicone hose. And put it over the edge like this of your pump so that you have a good seal. Now, you can get in here like this. And pulls it right out getting the good seal is the key to that so there's another way and the last thing I want to talk about we'll do it on this resistor here which would be what two these two here okay make sure we can get a good that's yeah, pretty good. If you're getting something that, you know, was manufactured for you, chances are they've used crappy lead-free solder. So it's always a good idea to come back in and melt in a little bit of known good solder. That'll help with the flow. Then again, you put your, your flux on there, and you can come in and just get this solder right out of there. Down on both these guys here. Sorry about that. Things went flying there for a little bit. That happens. Anyway, we can just come back in there. Heat that guy up. Pop out one end.
pop out the other end, and then all we're left to do is clean up the pads. So pretty simple. You know, do you need all these different types of tools, especially the hollow needles? No, not really. So what do you need? Well, you're going to need soldering iron, flux, and a pump. You should be able to do it with these. A nice to have is a desoldering braid. I wouldn't put that as a must have because it's mostly just useful for cleaning off pads, especially when you get into multi-layer boards. It can't really get in there that well. So keep that in mind. And that's about it for today. So I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank the patrons for uh, supporting this channel. There's a link down below. If you haven't become a patron, you can for just $1 a month. All right. That's it. I'm out. Peace.